What's up, man? How are you? What's going on, man? I want to welcome you to the show. We have Jamie Madrox in the building. Twisted, you already know what it is with their new album, Glyph, Astronomicon, coming up for Sports Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max, Live 365, iHeartRadio. You know what it is. Jamie, how's it going, man? Welcome to the show. I just wanted to be behind you like, bang, bang, bang. Yeah. <laughs> I should have brought the sound effects out. Right, 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 right. Oh, man, I'm doing good, man. I love the energy, man. I love I, I love anybody out there trying to help us do what we're trying to do, which is spread the word about Astronomicon, Glyph, and all the good stuff we got going on, man. We always got a good bunch of stuff going on. So, so yeah, man. Um, well, well, let's talk. What we about to get off into, man? Yeah, what you want to know first? Yeah, I mean, we're, we can get right into the, the new album. We get into Astronomicon. But before we get right into that, I respect your background there. You got the Halloween 3. I see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a uh, uh, my dude from Brain Dead Customs. He makes these, uh, like, it's like, I think it's like, it's supposed to be intended as a towel, but it's too cool to not hang on the wall. So, yeah, man, I love that. Yeah, Part of my I office decor. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way with, with horror films, you know, that's the second love for me as far as music goes. But we can get right into to, to that later. But how are you feeling about the new album, Glyph? Because I know Glyph, it usually stands for an image, like a symbol. So what was the mm -hmm. representation that you were trying to get off with, with Twisted with this album? I think I think more or less it was like when 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 COVID happened, we dropped Mad Season. I, I mean, pardon me, uh, uh we dropped the record and and uh and then we got we we like um the way that the way that the situation was is it's like we were trying to get a voice out for people who were trying to i'm assuming feel the same way you, what we do uh, what our job as as entertainers is is to try to be there and entertain you or help you get through whatever it is in your life you're going through and at that time it was uh it was covid and, and it was like everywhere. I mean, we still, it's still remnants of it yeah. floating around in the world. It's not gone, it's not away, but at that time. So it was like the the uh, anonymousness of it, how it came out of nowhere and it dropped. And, and I thought that that was cool. So we wanted to test um, the, the, the listeners and see, you know, what's, what's really good. Like what happens if we don't approach something like the normal, music approach like no banners and all this and, and commercials and stuff like what if we do it like underground like what if we just do it you know what i mean so we just kind of put it out and didn't really say a lot about it and we had it with us on the road and uh and it started picking up and people were talking about it and everybody's like yo yo it's not on digital man what's up all oh, you know it, it bump twisted they ain't put it on digital they ain't down with the you know like oh man get out of here with that or whatever and it was just like it was interesting as like, um, I don't want to sound like a douche, but like as an experiment, it was interesting to see like like the reaction of people and to see how how important like digital is to to the scene. You know what I mean? Because it's like we, we take a lot of shit for granted. You know what I mean? So it's like we just wanted to see, especially especially in our uh, uh, petri dish of, of of listeners that we have that that culminated to the scene that we are a part of. Which I know there's a music scene that's way hugely vast and goes around the planet but our our particular portion of that the uh you know the underground juggalo scene and whatnot it was interesting to see who who's there what kind of pulse is there what's it you know so it was a good response and then uh we're just now uh putting it out properly so that it could be on the digital platforms and get all the the what everybody was wanting y'all got what y'all wanted i hope now you know we we, we officially on par with uh with, with what it do. So yeah, man. You've been showcasing your lyrical ability for years. Never die reboot. That's the one for me off of the album. Of course, when you really look at the lyrical ability that you guys have, but I, I've been paying attention to your TikTok lately because I saw you did a freestyle over Limp Bizkit's break stuff. Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. I, I love, I love the idea that I get to do what I love and, uh, and I really do love it. So it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm taking every opportunity to showcase what I do. Cause I feel there will come a point, nothing lasts forever. I feel there'll come a point when I won't be able to do that or, or whatnot. And I don't want to ever look back and regret on a time when I should have, would have, could have, cause man, I'm getting it. I'm trying to, at least I'm trying to get it. Let, let it be known. I hope you, I hope y'all see me trying to get it. That's how I'll leave it like that, you know? You are, and you've been doing this since the early beginning here from the early days, and we, we can get right into the history of just you guys and what you guys accomplished throughout history. But you, you brought up COVID before, and it was important for me in learning when doing my research on you guys is that mm -hmm. you saw this thing coming way before it even hit the state. So you had to change the whole infrastructure to your website 
and just deciding to release music and had because you guys knew that it was going to shut down torn in the u.s so you guys well what was different it, well for us thankfully what was different for us is, is is we didn't have that that parent company so like when the industry shut down we we didn't shut down no one shut us down we kept at functioning throughout throughout all of this which helped us out greatly and it showed us that um it showed us how how again uh, how reliant people are on everything being just so easy oh all i gotta do is all i gotta do is and then you know but when you can't do that no more now what now what you gonna do you know what i mean so we were we were put in that position where we were blessed to be like, oh, well, nothing has stopped for us. Let's keep doing what we do. And it was nice to be able to have a, 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 a record that I, I hope people will look back on and be like, you know, if anything, if that be a, a bad time in our lives or whatever, I hope they look back and had that as some sort of a, um, something to lean on. You know what I mean? If, if a, a wall to protect you and lean on if you get tired, I don't know, you know, something to be there for you, you know? Mm -hmm your history when we go back at it because you and Paul, he saved you at the rompish room when you were younger. And you, <laughs> it, you, you, you started he hearing all, all about this because you had a common friend in Brian and he was just telling you that you should hang out with, with Paul because he listens to hip hop. He likes comic books. You shared a lot in common, but you were the rock kid. You like the Beatles, Frank Sinatra, Kiss. So your gateway into this was really Paul and then run DMC's Raising Hell CD. It, it was amazing. Yeah, that was and that was another introduction into um, variant covers. Now in the comic book world, we see that all the time. Everybody's got variant covers. But back in back in the time, it was like uh, there was like a few different colorways, like green and purple, red and purple, or red and blue or whatever. So we each got our own copy of the tape. It was just cool. And it was something that we all gelled with together. And it was my introduction into uh, st song structure, um, uh, rhyme patterns like I feel run at that time it still does i mean just run has a has a cadence to his voice and how he commands listeners to listen and there was there was something that was taught in that and uh and, and the same with chuck d chuck d had a push you know like well, you gonna listen to what i got to say and and you did you know what i mean and that was like again just things that the more the more layers of hip-hop that they introduced me to the more things that i took away that I was able to, uh, I was blessed with that type of uh, uh, exposure to that to that kind of music because it, had it wouldn't have been for them, I would have never heard and I would probably wouldn't be sitting here today. So it was, it's all good, it's all good. In addition to NWA Straight Outta Compton, because any time that I learn about NWA Straight Outta Compton, especially when it, when you look at it from the perspective of metalheads, there's something mm -hmm. about Straight Outta Compton I always hear about them is that that was the album that got me into hip hop. And it's just so crazy to me. Why do you think that was the album that just brought people from all different walks of life, especially in the metal genre, metalheads out there into the hip hop genre? I think I think because because it was powerful. It was mm -hmm. uh, it was it was what it meant. It was what it stood for. It was something that that everyone could find, you know, like when you can bring people together, that's a wonderful that's a wonderful thing. And and that was the vibe at the time. And it was just like, yeah, what if you could say that? What if you could say that? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And and and, and they did. And people were like, oh, man, turn that up, man. Well, let me get that. And, and before you know it, it was everywhere. And that was great. That was great. Because I mean, again, which which again, defined and shaped hip hop again. It was another uh, it, it took on another form and and it kept pushing forward which is cool because it's like when you get down into the evolution of, of of where we came into and where it was when we came in with the underground scene you know uh which would have been somewhere i'm sure uh, on the side on the side dish of horrorcore or whatnot you know what i mean it's like again you could just see how how the how how music has evolved and it's it's all it all comes from you know what what you're put on by what you're raised by what you're into i think if if you are influenced like how we were i'm someone that really respects the horrorcore genre and you just see how it just evolved over time with isham icp what you guys okay. did and you see even cool keith i mean cool keith is someone that was able to just go Shut into up. the to the, the hip-hop lane and then just have dr octagon black elvis dr doom all these personalities you know have you ever considered or even ran into cool keith throughout your time in the industry i'd love to have you see what you, you guys could ever work together 
No, that would be ill. No, no, I would be totally down with that. But but no, we have never we've never passed ways. Uh, 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 I, I respect dude and, it, and it's awesome. And, it, and he was always on the scene. You are correct about that. It was always a, a prevalent name that would be in that circle of, of, of people doing that kind of, you know, provocative alternative hip hop, which was cool. I mean, that's what I gravitate to. I love that kind of stuff. So if it's well, I agree with you. That would be a nice pairing. I'd love to see that. It, it's got to happen because that guy, he's oh, such an innovator and just adds to the genre and, You've said it before because coming out of Detroit, you look at Big Sean, Eminem, and even Eminem had his horrorcore aspects. We see it with 3 a.m., really? just the crazy stuff that he would do back in the day. Oh, really? It's unbelievable. You've described it in the past as being the horror section, that the horrorcore is the horror section of hip hop. Do you ever see it getting that mainstream respect and attention? Do you see it? Because you have artists like Eminem, Bone Thugs that have crossed over, even DMX. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it has. I mean, I think it has. I just think that it's it's crossed over quietly mm -hmm. because you see you see things that are like great examples of 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 things we fought for. Like when you see Kim Dracula, a shout out Kim Dracula, like when you when you see when you see artists like that that are pushing the envelope, it's like I feel like I feel like we were we might have been in somewhere in that inspiration and, and that vibe because it's like it's the look it's the sound it's cool I mean it's just like obviously experiencing uh experimenting with music and stuff like that is cool too but I mean it's just like I think I think it's cool I think that's the kind of shit that uh, we were raised on you know what I mean and and uh and, and influenced us so hopefully our part in what we did or 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 what we're doing it has been an inspiration to people. We always said that, you know what I mean? Even back in the days, we would joke around and be like, man, I wonder wonder when or how one day uh, uh, juggalos or juggalettes are gonna, are, are gonna grow up and be like, you know, the next Steven Spielberg or whatnot. You know what I mean? It's like, we would always say that and it'd be like, I wonder, I wonder if they'll ever come back and grab one of their favorite songs and put it on the soundtrack and stuff like that. You know, and it's like, in a comical sense, you know what I mean? We would we would chuckle about that, but it's like, it's it's cool to see how the things that we wanted to get, the horror imagery, all of the the, the scary vibe, the, the the melodramatic music, the theatrics, it's all come into play. Ghost is one of the biggest bands in the world, man. If that's not horror and, and wicked and horror core, I mean, it's all it's all about the devil. Their album is 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 like the 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 chapters of the Satan Bible. I mean, again, it's like horror core is prevalent it just snuck in it didn't come in full force like bah, bah, we here to rap about the you know wicked stuff it just it we did all that like that was i think like that chapter kind of you know it was it was the uh that was the come up of what we did you know what i mean you could see at it. least during the psychopathic years you know what i mean the uh the 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 sound the evolution of sound and and taking it from you know growing up with most tasteless and evolving a freak show and getting all the way to something like unlikely prescription you can see the 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 evolution and how we sometimes just uh let it do what it do <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean it's like you know so yeah most tasteless freak show two classics right there i know on your most recent tour just hearing about it that you consider retiring some of your older work what's the reason for that because is it just because there's it's like the Nas argument when Nas always says stop just putting me in that box with Illmatic I have so much more work would you say that is because you guys released a ton of great? records oh. Independence Day we can go yeah. on and on yeah 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 no real Green talk Book. like like uh yeah yeah no like and, and shout out Nas that that's probably that's a great way of putting it you know what I mean it's like I, we always we always see it and say it like um, it's like your first kiss. You know what I mean? You'll never forget it. It's like it, those those your your first introduction to Twisted, whatever record that was, is the one you hold close to your heart. M meanwhile, in reality, we all are in. We feel like I say we, me and Paul feel like the 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 stuff we're recording right now is what's going on in our world. So that's the most important to us because it's the now one. And, and mind you, most times we're recording stuff that you know it's already on the new stuff well y'all are just hearing the old the, what's new to you we're you know what i mean it's like we try to stay ahead of it so so it makes it really complicated for us mind you twisted but nevertheless you know but but like uh i don't know man i just think it's 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 part of the process of of, of how we do it you know 
tours, the Warp Tour was one that you can remember for sure. But learning about your history was that you guys turned down Woodstock because you feel as though that just didn't be in sync with your your message. Now looking back on that, do you regret that at all, or you're still no, from- no, no, I don't because because at the time, um, it's it no, it doesn't matter what time frame you're in. You have to be about what you're about, mm-hmm. and at the time, that's what we were about. We were about all of that against all of that type of vibe of the mainstream and, and, and like literally called it out on, on bury me alive. Like literally in, in the, within the time frame of like a year to two years when it was happening. So it was like, it seemed not right, but when it did happen, it was like, Oh, so we don't have to hold ourselves pliable to a, a, a rule of the, of a table of rules that were created that don't hold any water. So you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to celebrate your birthday if it's not your birthday. You don't give a crap about your birthday. Okay, I don't care. Then I'm not going to celebrate it either. You know what I mean? It's like, that's it. It's like the, the, the rules went out the window. So it's like, it's like whatever. So when we did have an opportunity to do Warp Tour, we were very like appreciative and, and took it on full force. And we're like, and tried to treat it with the utmost respect and, uh, and try to rebrand ourselves because we kind of got that, that, I hate the word image, but we got this like bad rap in the industry. And it's like, well, of course, because you were talking that that shit flat out. You know what I mean? You you were saying the things about the mainstream and now the mainstream don't like you. What a surprise. You know what I mean? So when we were given the opportunity to rebrand ourselves and come in as professionals and show everybody that, you know, people can change because that's what we preach about. You know, you can change, you can turn your life around, whether you're a drug addict or alcoholic or whatever you're suffering through, you could get through that. You just got to believe in yourself, you know, and, and if we can be a help to you, some sort of a support system through our music or whatever, that's what, that's what's up. You know what I mean? So to be that, I don't know, that that's, that's the vibe though. You know what I mean? You stay true to yourself all the way through and through. And when I look at it, especially when you look at the messages of Rage Against the Machine, because they did Woodstock. And if you are so against the machine, you wouldn't think no. they took that on. I know, man. I was going to say Rage for the machine because it's changed. It's changed, yeah. man. It's changed again. And and again, I don't want to uh, uh, throw throw shade or, or, or talk crap. Everybody's entitled to their beliefs. Exactly. But again, I don't want to be hypocritical there when I say the same thing. People are allowed to change as long as you do it gracefully, as long as you learn and, and you, you, you know, try to pay it forward as you go forward. And I feel that we've been doing that a lot in, in our scene as we go into other scenes with the rock and roll music, you know, and, and the rap and go back and forth. So, I mean, it's like it's like a revolving door for us. So I, I think that it's cool that um, we try to treat all genres with the same amount of respect. Like there's not one more important, like we, we see the passion across. It's like, it's performers. It's people who are passionate about their art. Like this is art, man. These people put out their heart in these songs and these performances and, and, and appreciating it from, from the value, man. That's what it's all about. For sure. And we got to get into when you spoke about how the industry viewed you, that they viewed you as the scumbags. Unfortunately, it's just, I don't really like that because you're your own artist at the end of the day. I get that. But something that was risky was 3-6 Mafia working with you at that time. And just tell me about that story, how you guys created that record because we recently lost Gangsta Boo. Yeah, yeah, RIP Gangsta Boo. Um, uh, basically, we we were doing, um, I, I believe if I remember correctly, they were doing a song with uh icp and we were doing freak show at the same time which was during uh it was was like bizarre bizarre and freak show so icp was doing a song with three six and then we were like hey man would you guys do a song with us like the whole group would everybody jump on a track we want to do like a family track and they were like hell yeah so then they asked us to be on their song and we were like, you got to be kidding me. Because again, you know, as fans, I'm not going to front like that. That was awesome. That was like a feeling like that was probably one of the first feelings of being like you felt like you were with your peers when you feel on the level. Like people speak about being on the level like that's a great feeling. And that was a, that was an awesome feeling to, to have that happen and, and have it be like, you know, damn, man, they invited us on their record, too. And that's awesome, man. That's so cool. So it's like it, it kind of, again, in the learning process of showing us how, how, how different types of business transaction happen. Some can be very organic. Some can be very business. You know what I mean? It all depends. That one happened to be a very organic, conversational, you know, meant to be kind of thing. 
you've also worked with the dog pound and dj quick another legendary yeah. collaboration yeah man yeah independence day i believe uh it was um that was that was a a, a monoxide like production venture he he made a list of people that he was like we just have to do songs with these people like we just have to and i'm like i'm down let's do it you know i'm always down to do music like and, and i'm always down for the chance to collaborate with people so it was it was nice to see uh people who who were receptive when, when we put out the call and 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 the songs that were actually recorded and put down um are, are awesome they go down in the history of of uh of of what we do for sure. And you continue to create history to this day, even when we look back at it and you've always painted your faces. This is when Paul, he's, could you put the makeup on and Paul saw you, you said, that's it. You had the idea of linking up all along. Your kiss is a huge inspiration. When was your first kiss concert? Did you get to see that the all original members? Never, never. I never, I never got to go to see a kiss concert. Wow. I, I got a kiss. I got a kiss 12 inch when I was uh, little, I got hooked. I got, I had everything. I had the guitar, the record player. I had everything like literally. Um, and they were just an inspiration. And when we first started, we would put like baby powder on our face. And, and I just happened to take some of Shaggy's paint and try to do something. And I'm like, what about this? You know what I mean? So it's like, again, it was a trial and error kind of thing, but it was nice to not have the, the clumpy oatmeal. <laughs> 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 definitely, definitely not a, a functional look. I promise you. But but no, the coolest uh, fun fact was that um, Mikey Clark knows how much I love Kiss, and he was at a Kiss concert, and he literally called me and left me a voicemail. Was like, Jamie Madrox, rocks. Listen, and 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 the pirate or the pyro, boom, you know, like it was so lit, dude. I'm like, of all the people in the world that call, you call me that. That was that was pretty dope. But he actually got to see it, so it, at least at least people know how much I, I love Kiss and and throw that out there. So so that's fresh. I, I, I was able to see them two years ago at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn for their farewell tour, and yeah. I didn't get to see all original four members with Ace Frehley, Peter Chris. So, so I you said, see, well. Like, yeah, Thayer and singer. Yeah, yes. yeah. That's so I said, I someone actually saw the fair, the the farewell tour has ended already because I know. they're not the original members, you know. But no, I know, I know, I know. It's so ill, but but I love it. I love, I love that. I love that they still do it. I mean, it's like it's 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 bands like that. It's acts like that that give me inspiration. That that when you know, uh, uh, Ronnie Bradkey says, "I'll do, I'll do this. I'll be doing this shit till I'm 70. Or or you know what I mean? It's like people are like, you know, like, yeah. You're right. You mean hell yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like, it, it's just a mindset. You surround yourself with like-minded people who who are in it to get it, and and uh and and age is a number, man. Somewhere up here. <laughs> in a way, absolutely. In a way, the Kiss relates to you guys in the whole ICP everything that came out of horrorcore because Kiss to me is the horrorcore of rock. And just when you hear about it, the the trouble that they were given, they didn't even want to let them into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Just what they stood for. Same. It's insane. It, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's crazy. And, and I love that. I love that. And it's like, I love now how when people look back at uh, people's other people's legacies, it all seems like, oh, it was just a cakewalk. You know, it's just they, they you know, it's just everything was just so easy for them. And it's like it. I'm sure it wasn't. You know what I mean? It's like from a person who, who like who, who tries and continues to try to break boundaries for yourself and, and, and artistically and whatever, I can only imagine the, 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 the time that they've put into it. And, you know, so yeah, that it's all, all love and respect to, to, to those who still get it, man, and still want it. You know what I mean? That's a great thing. Never let that hunger die. Hell no. Uh, you can't even back in the day. I think what really surprised you was when Lior Cohen told you guys in his office that you guys could really rap. Yeah, that was cool. No, that was that was that was different from from two kids who who like, you know, would would dabble and and try to buy a couple pieces of equipment and manage to get into a two hour studio block and just have someone of that stature of that importance to the game. Say anything to you. Hey, kid, go grab me a soda, you know, more or less. <laughs> hey, man, this is really good right here. I, I like what you're putting down. You're like, oh, oh, oh OK, OK hey man we need to stick to doing whatever we're doing you know like if ever there were like you know inspiration or encouragement that'd be it man it was um yeah evil dead I, i've done my research online that this was the film that you and paul watched as kids mm -hmm. this was the the entryway really was this the the entryway into the horror genre for you guys for being becoming huge uh, fanatics 
I don't necessarily say the entryway. It was that was the um the, the comfort food of, of the horror for us. Like that was the go-to to movie. I'm not sure how uh, or, or, or how far back the, the horror movie stuff goes with me. I used to watch them with my grandpa and, and, and my dad and stuff like that. We used to do like movie nights. So it was like a sci-fi horror deal. So like I go, I, I go back a long time with it. And I remember first finding out, up, out about Freddy Krueger from the ROC. He told me he came up to this place where we would hang out. So again, you know, uh, yeah, man, I, 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 I love horror movies, man. They're great. Yeah, and especially Barbarian was one recently that you enjoyed. So ill, what a good movie, dude! Yeah, that was just along. Yeah, I didn't see the uh that 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 turn coming at all, bro. And even uh, what's the other one too? Uh, the Black Phone. The Black Phone. Scott Derrickson yeah. who created Sinister. Oh, God, so good, fucking uh Stephen King's kid, right? Joe Hill. Yeah, yeah, bro. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. Great films. I know you weren't too big on Halloween Ends. <sighs> Which I, agree, shade, which, I agree, which, which I agree with. I'm not, yeah. you know, I yeah, think no, you I would just, really. I, yeah. I don't want to throw shade. That's the only thing. It's like, you know, it's, it's like for, for instead of, instead of just bashing things, I just, you know, I'd rather not say things. I just, it, it, that was, that was uh, David Gordon Green. I believe is his name. That was David his Gordon interpretation mm -hmm. of, of the Halloween franchise. And I know Rob Zombie got a lot of flack when he did his interpretation of the franchise. So until you or me or any of these other people get to do our interpretation, uh, inter you know, like, shut up. You know what I mean? Or, or just take it or support it or don't or whatever. Vote with your money. Don't buy it. Buy the shirt. Don't. I'm like, I don't know what to say. You know what I mean? But it's like, I took it. It was the offering given. I took it uh, and it was all right. It had its parts, but there were just parts where everybody's like, that's not my Michael Myers. And I'm like, oh, God bless. And yeah, man, I don't know. I don't I don't know. <laughs> and losing the wrestling match in the cave. Yeah, bro. What was that? What was that? <laughs> I don't I, I so many questions I just want to ask. And in and, and like a, a super serious, not being uh, uh, condescending for real, like what, what, where, why, why? Like of all the places, like I, I dig that he was hiding and, you know, like letting stuff that, you know, like all that was cool, but he just got so weakened and this, oh man, the kid that got beat up by the band kids, like, like literally for a juice box or something, a Yoo-Hoo, man, stop playing. I'm you making me get in my emotions. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I promise everybody won't go come out of my face, but damn. All right. It's good. It's good. It's good. Well, right, you've established well. great relationships with all the pretty much all the horror actors in the industry, especially with creating Astronomicon. But Kane Hodder is someone, you know, I had him on my show a couple of years back. And a great relationship that you guys have. And you actually were featured in his To Hell and Back story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was an honor. Uh, uh, making friends with him was 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 cool. Uh, uh, a great a great person. I never in a, in a million years would have thought that I would have called him a friend. Like just watching watching the movies and and finding out that it goes back further than that. Because somewhere between when I liked Jason and when I met before I met Kane, uh, he was a stunt coordinator on another love song. And it was just so crazy and in passing. And we were like, who the hell's that guy? And it was just weird. And it was like, didn't, didn't put two and two together until much, many years later. And then as we met, it was started chit chat and it was like, that was you. And it was just like crazy. So it, it was just ill. It was just like, you know, that, that seven degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> one of those, one of those, man. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Good He's stuff. a big supporter of you guys. I remember he brought brought you guys up in, in the interview we did because he was telling me about the movie he did with Tupac and then he brought he said he was a fan of you guys. Just Love looking him, back man. at it, especially with I remember watching this documentary back in the day. Were you on Bravo's a hundred scariest movie moments? Were you on that back in the day? I don't know. I don't think so. We've always wanted to do that kind of stuff. They don't, I don't know. They don't they don't mess with us, but but yeah, no, I I don't think so. We did we did something for the uh the cane one you spoke about and uh and something else. Maybe they might have used it like I don't know, but I, I don't believe so. Somebody would have probably said something. I would yeah, because I, I remember seeing that back in the day. I was like, was twisted on that because I remember they were having all kinds of celebrities who were in the horror in the in the chair That's talking awesome. about their favorite horror movie moments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's so rad. Yeah, I'd totally be down for stuff like that. I love that. You got to walk me through this process of creating Astronomicon because this was all inspired with you and Paul going to the Star Trek convention when you were younger. So how did you go about 
building the, the footsteps and gaining all these big names. And it's successful now. This is the sixth one. And you've got Kevin mm-hmm. Smith coming over this year, March 3rd through the 5th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. excited, man. Uh, Jay and Bob. He's, yeah. You know, Silent Bob and, and Jason Muse. Uh, yeah, man, all of most of the the clerks people and, and just like all of it, uh, when we when we go into building it, we try to um, take take things that we enjoy, uh, pop culture and what have you, and try to uh, put it in a boiling pot and start reaching out to people and seeing who would be interested. And, and you try to you get some of us that try to top the year before it or whatnot and that kind of stuff, you know, and which, which again, competition is a great thing and it, and it, and it makes for uh, a good, sometimes, sometimes healthy uh, uh, exercises as, as you get to do stuff. But um, uh, sometimes it can be a deterrent if, if things don't work out the way you plan. But, um, but we were blessed that, you know, most of the people that, that we reached out to jumped aboard and, and, and we're down and man, we're ready to rock and roll. This year is going to be number six. Burton Manor, Livonia, Michigan, March 3rd through the 5th, I believe. Is that correct? I'm going to look at my paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. March 3rd through the 5th. See, I'll be doing my homework. All right, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so it's 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 going to be exciting. I can't believe we got to six. Like, I'm excited. Like, after one, and one was crazy with the snow, and then two was like, oh, my God, we're doing this again, and then three, and then you blink, and it's like, damn, it's six. So that's good. All good. All, all, all good. We're, we're, we're excited and, uh, and, and prepared to host a, a good one this year. Congratulations on the sixth edition, of course, especially getting your own Pop Funko toys because this is what you wanted. <laughs> Are they going to be ready by Astronomicon for the fans to get, perhaps? Um, I'm hoping. Uh, we're like fingers and toes crossed that, that, that they will be. We, we have been told that they were shipped from Funko to us. We haven't received the packages yet because when we get them, we're going to do an unboxing. So th- that hasn't happened yet as at the moment of re- recording this. So when I see them, I'm going to show them to you and everybody else. Cause I'm, I'm going to be screaming it from the rooftops of the mountains. I'm telling you, I'm so excited, but, but yeah, no, it was, it's, uh, it's just another one of those things that, that was like a, a passion project for us. We, we love, we love Funko. We've loved them for, for ages. We've collected and, and, and all of that. I mean, we even have that in our Instagram handles. It's like Paul's pops and pops and vintage. You know what I mean? It's like, we, we are passionate about the product and we love it and, and it's important. And, and we also love how like, how like the scene that we built uh, in, in the juggalo days, the community vibe. I'm starting to see it and I appreciate it. And I've, I've, I've been like super thankful to all the communities that have welcomed me in as far as like the comic book community and like, you know, the online creator community and all these people like noticing that there are these different communities of these people that exist. And, and it's all it, with the Funko community. It's the same thing. It's like they care about each other. It's a support system, man. It's it's not it's not unlike anything that we've already done. So it's very familiar to me. And I just I appreciate that. And it's again, it's another one of those things where I mean, again, maybe maybe I'm a, a what's it called where you like think well of yourself or something. Maybe I'm that kind of person where I just think that you know I would like to hope that maybe we influence a little bit of these kind of things or this kind of take care of everybody in your community vibe, you know what I mean? Like that kind of, so that's awesome. That's why we fit into that vibe and the pop culture vibe and the convention vibe, because we're like the do onto others as you want done onto yourself kind of people. You know what I mean? Take yeah. care of everybody, everybody's somebody, you know? Mm-hmm. I Some mean, and to forget that man, sorry. Oh no, you're good. No, it's just, it's just amazing to see how these cons have really come together and they expanded out. You know, it may have started mm-hmm. from horror, then it expanded to wrestling, comic sure. books. It's all brings all kinds of people from walks of life together. For sure. For sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's, and that's cool though, because it's like, it's like the melting pot and it's, and it's good because there's something for everyone for, for mom, dad, Jane and junior, you know, everybody, everybody there in the family has something that they can gravitate to. And I like that because it's all under the same roof and, and you want it to be inclusive for everyone, you know, and not just, and not just cater to one specific thing like just wrestling or just horror or just something we try to keep the the door open and the revolving door open with all kinds of fun because as we we i I have i have ocd and adhd and i like you know like i like to it's i like a thing and i like a lot of things so it's like for us to just have it just be one thing it's like everyone's like you can only pick one i'm like you sure i can't pick three you can only pick one i'm like can i pick three like you 
you can only pick one. Oh, I don't want to play this game. Like, you know, so that's, that's, it's a good, it's, it's a good vibe to be able to put that into the convention as well. Cause it makes it cooler. Cause then there's something for everybody. And the wrestling's not your bag and it's just all wrestling. And it's like, Oh, well, I lost you. You're not, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, I, I don't want you. I don't want anyone to walk away. I want everyone to come in and have a great time because what we do is, is worthy of your time and it makes a smile on your face. So I wouldn't want to deny you that yeah. or yourself. Don't treat yourself as what we like to say. Exactly. You're such a pillar of hip hop history when we look at your story, because you used to go to the hip hop shop and you went to high school with proof. Is that right? No, that was Paul. Paul that was went Paul. To, Paul went to Osborne and that's where all of those guys uh, went to high school at. And our ties with Eminem was uh, when back in the days when we would do House of Crazies. And I believe I'm going to really test my knowledge here on my memory. So I think it was called Ill Intent. Mm. soul intent ill intent something like that and that was like the that, that was like it was m I, I thought it was m and another guy but it might have just been m and he he was not m and m yet and he would come over when we were building props for house of crazies and just be like fascinated like just like so y'all are just gonna build this shit I'm like yeah man he's like yeah dude what's up man how are you you know say what's up he's like what's up you know he just chit chat with paul for a little bit and raise up so it was cool that he was somebody from the neighborhood who happened to be around and and like everybody, we we would just usually be cool with people. Like, what's up? How you doing? You know, tap in, make sure everybody good, whatever. How can we help out? He wanted to perform a show. We were like, you can do the show. And he did the show. And that's cool. You know, just like we we like to be like those type of people because I would like to hope that if ever I was in the other position and I was to ask somebody that they would do the same for me. So that was the type of vibe. But yeah, how cool is that, you know? Uh, uh, the world famous Eminem uh, was opening up the show, man. That's killer, dude. And he had a towel on his head. He was in the zone. He was, he, I, and I, I, I love that. I love that. I just, I love that. It's this had so to be cool. the. Was this the Infinite when he dropped Infinite? That was his first Maybe. mixtape. Oh man, I'm not sure. I just, I, I know there was this uh, a, a single. Yeah, showing my age, a single. But yeah, it was like a a, a little uh, like they sold it up at the uh, record store where we would always get the uh, the local music and stuff like that. And it's like, oh man, that's him. Oh yeah, he goes to so and so and he chopping it up and whatever. And it's cool. Yeah, you see, you saw it's, Kid Rock too during the grit sandwiches for breakfast era. He, he was putting the flyers up we, on cars too. Yep, we used to go to the clubs, and that was another thing, and that's why I got respect for him too. And it's and it's awesome to see like like what what wonderful careers both of those guys have have like grown into and and just how awesome it is that like that's so rad like like definitely i think that's fresh because uh like again i remember doing that like me and roc were flying you know cars and you just hear kid rock yell from all the time don't touch my flyers on the window like do we get to touch your flyers? shut up you know like you're joking and friendly like competition and stuff like that again like we said it keeps it healthy but it was just good to see people on the level and not too good to get out there and actually promote their own stuff. That was back in a time when there was no interwebs and, you know, people be like rap for me. And you literally had to rap some, you couldn't just pull up your Spotify or iCloud drop. Let me, let me drop you some, let me drop you a little, some jewels or something, you know, that was a different time, man. So it's cool to be in that era and still be blessed to do it. So yeah. So yeah, now I got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is history right here man you know i appreciate every, everything that you're telling here today and the juggalos are strong who are you tapped in with right now out of detroit who's going to be next up as far as horrorcore goes or just someone who anyone you could be tapped in up and coming man as far as for horrorcore i don't know man i haven't really seen i i mean the, the, the best thing I can say to me, the, the, the greatest person right now who's representing for Horrorcore is probably Spencer Charnas from Ice Nine Kills. Mm -hmm. I think his entire, his entire vibe is, it, it screams love for horror music and, and the whole entire aesthetic. And I think if I had to pick somebody, which you made me pick, and, and I will pick him, and I know it's not the rap thing, but it's like, as far as for that kind of horror, horror vibe, like at its core, he has a love for horror and it bleeds throughout the music. And uh, and I'm picking him because I, there there isn't, the music scene has, has changed. There isn't, I, I don't, I haven't heard it. If it's out there, it's not on my radar. 
are. And I'm sorry if you out there and I'm, you know, maybe whatever, but I just, I haven't heard it. And I'm just like, I don't know. It's the analogy of what you say when you look at Netflix, you fall asleep looking at the content on Netflix. There's so many new artists <laughs> out there. Scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And I'm just like, man, whatever. But but the intention is there. The intention is nice, I guess. So so yeah, man. I I, I would I would say to the same thing that that people used to say to us is uh, keep trying, keep doing what you're doing, keep making noise. Someone will hear you. Someone will see you. I guess. You know what I mean? That's part of the hustle. You also have an interest in, in acting, and you've been in movies in the past, especially for typecast roles. I recently saw you with the Terrifier Clown, David Howard mm-hmm. Thornton, of call of course. Chris Jericho mm-hmm. had the cameo in terrifier 2 is there any talks but perhaps maybe you guys can get a little cameo in terrifier 3 or any other upcoming horror oh film? man oh that would be rad no yeah with there's there is no talks but that would totally be cool we're not not against any of that that would be totally fun yeah it acting acting's fun it's cool it's 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 different you you get to find out how there's different kind of actors there's like method actors that you know like they gotta get drunk to play a drug you know you're like <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa 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 you know like it's crazy. It's like, well, then what the hell is acting, man? I thought that's what you do when you're acting. You know? So yeah, so it's fun. So it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I love, I love people and people watching and just, you know, the whole idea, how everybody's different and it's cool. So it's, it's fun to see people's different approach to how they te- take on acting or, or music or what have you. So it's always, always a very uh, interesting thing. Absolutely. Man, it, it, top five movies, you got to have horror movies. If you're going on a trip, vacation, oh, anywhere, yeah. if you could only have five horror movies to watch for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mm, Halloween 2, John Carpenter's, uh, Evil Dead 2, um, Exorcist 3. Wow. Uh, Night of the Demons. Um, how many is that? That's four. That's I four. Get one, get one more. Hmm. Hmm. That's... Uh, Man, I know I'm sleeping on something and I can't think of it right now, but bruh, I don't know. That last one, that last one's going to, uh, it's, it's probably, you know what? Okay. Uh, 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 Friday the 13th, three in 3d. Wow. It's got the, a it, lot of sequels. That's interesting. It, it, it is because it's like a lot of the, a lot of the original movies were, were like builders. I would have picked Halloween one as well because Halloween one and two are, are good, but, but there's something about two. I have I have a, a emotional connection to two. I don't know why. I ever since a kid, like I maybe it was because it was the one that was allowed to be ran on television or that they cut for television or something something like that. But it's like it's the music, it's the, it's a scene, it's a setting. It's I love. Yeah, it's it's just every now you know everybody's like, oh, her wig looks horrible and this that and the other. And now I see all that, but as a as a kid, I didn't care. I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna get you. <laughs> that's so great i just love it and and yeah and evil dead 2 is is clearly better than evil dead 1 because it's pretty much the same movie remade better which is good and and, and there's no hate there that's that's all, all all the more better and exorcist 3 is is a good movie george c it, scott it has, yeah man george c scott is a slept on actor man he that his uh his christmas carol uh performance i mean he just he he's a very uh the changeling Man, yeah. it would have probably made on the list as one of the the. Oh, Amityville! Did I still have a pick? Did yeah, I pick? Oh, I said we no, could I throw in a bonus. Pick. We could throw in a bonus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Am- Amityville too. The possession. See another possession. sequel. Another sequel. Yeah, George C. Scott Firestarter. He was in that too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah, hell yeah, man. And the reboot too. We just seen that not too long ago in the uh, the movie theater. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, good, good stuff though, bro. Good Crazy. stuff. Love, love the, love the sequels. I love how they got a chance to flesh some of the characters out or some of the different, the different nuances and stuff that happens in them that make them fresh. Yeah. Part three, he gets his hockey mask, obviously. Yeah. I like the burlap sack though. That was unique. It was, it was. And they really, uh, they really amplified it in the remake, which everybody, you know, kind of shit on, which, which was what it was, but I thought it was really good. I thought it had a lot of really, really good parts. I think the only word that they that they lost was they casted uh, uh, Sam from Supernatural 
and in Supernatural, Sam and Dean hunt Supernatural characters. So every time you've seen him, you're just waiting for Sammy. And, and you know, like in Jason, it comes like a Scooby-Doo episode. And I think that's where it went wrong. I really do. Uh, the rest of it is like, it's not bad. Like him moving fast like that and throwing the shit. Like it was, it was, I felt it. I yeah. thought it was good. I agree with uh, you on Halloween good. 2 as well. I've always been a Halloween 2 over the first one type of guy. And I've oh, even seen pictures of you online with the Halloween 2 Fright Rags shirt. Yes, man. man. I love it. Shout out to Fright Rags too, man. Ben's awesome. Yeah. But yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff for good real, stuff. man. Yeah. Kane Hodder. I mean, have you guys thought about creating your own video game with all these horror games that are coming out Friday 13th? Then you got the Texas Chainsaw one with Gun Media coming out soon. Evil Ooh. Dead the game. Have you thought and about the, getting your own last, twisted video game? I mean, nothing. Nothing's ever ruled out. I don't ever rule anything out. I never say never. But but is it is it nine one one on the radar at this moment? Not necessarily, because yeah. because uh, we're still like soaking in the 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 Funko the the Funko Pop drop about to happen. We're still soaking in Astro Six. We're still you know getting ready to drop quite possibly the twisted record of our life with uh zeus our, our producer uh, actually works with rob zombie and everybody just he brought a whole entire new vibe to the table uh we were blessed to be able to write some songs together that like it was it just a really really awesome team effort that brought out i think a lot of difference in twisted but at the same time really going back and like making us relook at our roots and trying to bring that out in us as well in a 2023 setting it's insane, but, but yeah. yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's what's on my radar. That's what's consuming most of my up here at all given times. That's why I tend to drift. Cause I'm like thinking about the, was that mixed or mastered, right? Or was that sent properly? And what am I supposed to be picking up one of my kids right now? What the hell's going on? Where am I? <laughs> you know, one of those, <laughs> fun. it's fun. It gets great. Longevity is the main thing that artists should really look for in this industry. You guys have been able to master that, especially with the Juggalo fan base, the Twisted fans that are out there. What was something that you were able to take away from being signed to your deals, the Psychopathic Records years, the Island Def Jam Records years, some aspect that you're able to take away from the machine that you were able to apply in establishing longevity as independence, per se? Um, I would think I would think that uh, something that we took away that would be a, a learning process in, in a sense would be to practice good business, to, to pay attention to um, your, your customers to, in any business, whatever it is, it's like the, 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 they're your customers. The customer's always right. It was what, we, what my generation was taught. I'm sure that's not a thing anymore or whatever, but in a sense, it kind of means a lot because at the end of the day, I do this for you. If you enjoy it, that's awesome. You know what I mean? And, it, and, and it's like that you kind of build that relationship. And nowadays with social media, you can extend the relationship and it can go further than a fan letter back in the days or stuff like that. You know what I mean? And with all of the, um, uh, I'm trying to think of what the hell they're called. It's like, like Patreons and, and Bions and stuff like that and Discords and things like that. Like people are more accessible now to a fan base than they've ever been in their lifetime. So it's like, I think that I think that practicing good business amongst uh, uh, your your fan base, your 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 customership, or whatever you want to call it, like I think that's a good vibe. Like like take care of them. There's a reason they come to you. They come. They check for you because you got the hot shit. So bring the hot shit. You know what I mean? They check for you because you be talking to the stuff that that opens people's minds and want to want to hear about it. You know, like I think that's a lot of what it's about. So you know what I mean? that kind of relevance, I feel, I feel, I hope, you know what I mean? At least. Right. You've mastered it, man. I mean, you mastered it all, just longevity, the stories, even Scarface, he wanted you to paint his face. Just all the stories I've heard about <laughs> you guys and just the history that you put on for horrorcore, hip hop in Detroit. You guys are, are truly champions of, of your craft for sure. I love that. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. You already oh, yeah. know, man. Jamie, is there anything else you want to let the, the fans know? Anything else? I think we covered everything. Glyph, your, your, your story. Yeah. yeah, man. Pick up Glyph now on digital platforms. It's now officially available on all digital platforms. Don't forget to check out Astronomicon at Burton Manor, March 3rd through the 5th. Going down is Astro 6. Uh, only event that's truly out of this world. Go to www.astronomicon.com for... <laughs> 
tickets, VIP packages, pro photo ops, find out where to get a hotel, um, plot and tr make your trek nice and safe so you get there safely and enjoy yourself. Um, lots of cool things on there to uh, find out more about like the artists and entertainers and stuff that are going to be there. So it's a great place to, again, find a community of other people like minds that may be going, who knows, you might can bum a ride with one of them or, or carpool. You know, again, we, we promote the car, uh, uh, pardon me, the community vibe. So stuff like that happens in, in this world. So always be safe. Don't ride with strangers. You know what I'm telling you. You're a grown, we're all grown ups here, yeah. right? <laughs> you get what I'm saying. Don't exactly. jump in a car with a, Jamie Madrox said it was okay for me to jump in a car with a stranger. That's not what I said. I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, jump on the forums, make a friend. Who knows? Maybe you go to Astronomicon and meet somebody and find some new friends, like-minded people, just like you that enjoy the same things that you do. That's what right. I meant. Absolutely. But yeah, word up. You already know, man. And let them really know they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter at Twisted. Any accounts that you want to promote and anything else for social media? TikTok? Uh, uh, yeah, we got uh, uh, at Tweet Me So Hard for Twitter, uh, Official Twisted on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Paul's Pops is, is Monoxide. Uh, mine is Pops underscore and underscore Vintage on Instagram. And uh, we always on there chopping it up. So it's not like we're hard to get at. Again, that was the, the whole the takeaway, like be be accessible to the people that 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 rep for you. You know what I mean? Chit chat every now and again, you know, that kind of thing. Just put your face on the scene. Show up, pull up like you tell everybody else. Pull up. Well, you pull up sometimes. We'll see you. You know what I mean? Yeah, what absolutely. Do? Absolutely, man. Jamie, I want to thank you for coming on the show, man. Shout out Appreciate to George for bro. setting this up. Anytime you yeah, need any promo, want to jump back on the show, you're, you always have a place here, man. Keep doing you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for having me, man. For real, for real. Anytime, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Stay safe. Astronomicon's on the way. You too, man. Thank you much. Salute, Thanks. man. Peace out. All right.